go for basic life support. Basic life support, BLS. We have got adult BLS. We have got pediatric BLS as well. The task is you are in general medical ward. Alex is an FY1 doctor who has not attended his BLS workshop. Okay, and please demonstrate and teach him. Explain about the steps of BLS, assess him and give him feedback. So I told you usually they want uh, the feedback, give him feedback is mainly in the BLS teaching. All right. And the good thing is whenever they want us to teach the BLS, this uh, resuscitation council UK chart will be there in the cubicle. It will be there on the wall. You can have a look. And I think if you have got this chart, life is very easy. It's not going to be difficult for you to teach. You know? Now, what you're going to do first is obviously you will be doing the repo building exercise. You will assess their knowledge, how much they know, what they want to learn and why we do BLS and which patient you should do it. Just have a bit of conversation with them, isn't it? So BLS is basic life support. What do you do? You do chest compression. You do rescue breath in order to take over the function of heart and lungs. So if you got a patient who's unconscious, a patient who's unconscious or not breathing or not breathing properly, there you do uh, chest compression and rescue breath in order to take over the function of heart and lungs. That's a very simple basic explanation of a BLS, right? Uh, in, according to the UK resuscitation guidelines, BLS, we do not check the pulse. I know many of us, we might have done this uh, according to the American guidelines, but here in the British guidelines, if you see the chart, we don't have any mention of uh, pulse. We don't check pulse, right? Okay, so before we start, what we can do after doing all these repo building exercise, you can explain about these steps. Uh, you can go for this mnemonic as well, if you want, doctors A, B, C. First of all, we check if there is any danger or not. So wherever the victim is, just see if there is any danger. For example, you find somebody in the middle of the road, are you going to start the chest compression there and then? Not really, because it's not safe. So you just take them to the side of the road. If there is a fire, are you going to do the chest compression there? Only? Not really, because it's not safe for you. It's not safe for the victim. It's not safe for the bystander as well. So you have to be very careful about the safety and you make sure there is no danger. Doctors A, B, C. So there is no danger. Everybody's safe. Then you check the response. First, you just ask the name, hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Or else what you can do is you can tap on the shoulder as well. Again, be gentle. Don't be, don't just uh, uh, handle the dummy or in real life the patient very badly because then you can give more injuries to the patient. You gently tap on the shoulder. Hello, can you hear me? You hear me? You can okay? Hello? That's something that you can do. Then what you can do, you can shout for help as well. You can shout for help as well. And then what you do, you go for A and B as well. You check for airway, you check for breathing as well. Airway, head tilt, chin lift. If there's any foreign body, you can remove it as well. Head tilt, chin lift. That's how you check the airway. And then you check the breathing as well. How you check the breathing? You uh, look, listen, feel. You look for the chest, rise and fall. Look, listen. You listen the chest sound and Feel, you feel the uh, breathing sound on your cheeks. So look, listen, feel. When you check the airway and breathing, you make sure it should not be taking more than 10 seconds of your time. You have to be very quick. You have to be very, very quick. And then what you do, you can make a call to 999 as well and ask for help, ask for ambulance, ask for AED. What is this AED? Automated external defibrillator. You can ask for it as well, right? And then what you will do, you will start with your chest compression. When you're doing the chest compression, you have to use the heel of your uh, dominant hand, put in the lower part of the sternum and interlock it with the other one. And then make sure your elbows are straight and you are giving the pressure from the shoulder. That's the main thing, right? And when you are pressing it down, make sure it is going at least one third. It's going down at least one third and you're counting it loud as well. You give enough time to the chest to recoil and make sure while doing the chest compression, you're not lifting hand from the chest and count it loud. That's the, that's the uh, main thing that you need to do. 
right? And then give them good 30 chest compression, right? Give the dummy the 30 good chest compression. And then you explain about the rescue breath as well. Rescue breath, how it is done? Head tilt, chin lift, but this time you pinch the nose as well. You pinch the nose as well. And you give mouth to mouth chest compression. Are we going to give a normal breath or a forceful breath? A normal breath. Look for the chest rise and fall. Give another one. Chest rise and fall. That's it. Right. Now, in the exam, they might give you a special note that for the rescue breath, you don't have to demonstrate it, just verbally explain it. Sometimes they might give you a paper as well, uh, like a sheet. Uh, you can just put it on the dummy's face and you can demonstrate it. If not, they might be giving you a special note that for the uh, rescue breath, you just uh, verbally mention, you don't have to demonstrate it. Whatever is given in the task, just follow that. After you have done this explanation, what you will do, you will tell the student to do it because the task is telling you to assess him and give him feedback. When they're going to do, they'll make a mistake. They'll make one or two mistakes. And what you need to do, you just need to correct them. When you correct them, correct them nicely. Don't correct them saying, uh, for example, they made a mistake that uh, while giving the chest compression, they are bending the elbow. And you're like, Alex, come on, this is what I taught you. No, this is not how you correct them. Because you have taught them 10 things. They have learned nine things. They didn't learn one. So how are you going to uh, correct them? Alex, you're doing good. You're doing a very good job. But you know, when you're doing the chest compression, make sure you don't bend the elbow. The force should be coming from the shoulder and try not to bend the elbow. Let's give another try. One, two, three, perfect. You're doing good now. So that's how you encourage them and correct them if there is anything to be corrected. That's how you do it, right? Moreover, this chart is there. So what it says uh, uh, in the community setting, so what to do in the hospital setting and what is in the community. So the chart will tell you if they have asked you the hospital setting or if they asked you for the community settings. So usually for the adult BLS, they are giving us the community settings, right? So what's going to happen is it is uh, patient is unresponsive or breathing or not breathing properly what you do you call triple line ask for ambulance you go for 30 chest compression you go for two rescue breath you continue cpr with 30 is to two as soon as the automated external defibrillator arrives switch it on and follow the instructions that's how it is done i think it's easy yeah and when you should stop doing it, when you should stop doing it, you should stop. If the patient shows signs of life, then you can put the patient in the recovery position. If the help arrives, they can take over. Or if you feel tired, maybe you can stop. Right? So that's the that's the main thing. So when, they're, when you are telling them to do it, so they'll be making some mistakes. You correct them then and there. So they're doing one, two, three, and they're making the mistakes. Alex, you're doing good, good. Keep doing that. But just make sure your hands are fully straight. You're not bending the elbow. Come on, let's do it. One, two, three. Great. So you can correct them then and there. So that's your uh, uh, UK resuscitation council chart, right? And that is in the community setting. You just need to follow these things. Doctors ABC and explain about the chest compression, ask for the rescue breath and just follow it. The chart is going to be there in the cubicle. That is adult in hospital resuscitation. Obviously, if it is a hospital resuscitation, we have to go for A, B, C, D, E technique and that can be done. So we have not seen this station till now in the exam. Right now, when it comes to the pediatric one, pediatric. So we, again, we have got two. One we have got is the out of hospital. One we have got is the in the hospital one. Yeah, let's go for out of hospital. See, out of hospital. And if BLS is in real life, so BLS is not just for a medical person. It is for other people as well, because you might find you are not a doctor, for example, and you might find a person who's unconscious. So you should also know about PLS. You should also know about the basic life support. So when we are doing this, it's not only for uh, uh, the doctors, but obviously in the exam, it says this medical student wants to learn. So that's the thing. And they will tell you if in pediatric BLS, if they want us to teach the out of hospital protocol or they want us to teach in the hospital protocol. Yeah, let's go for out of the hospital. So out of the hospital, as I said, uh, it's not like always you have the doctor. It might be a non-medical personnel as well. That's why they have kept the steps very easy. They have kept the steps as it was in the adults, meaning 30 is to two chest compression. You might have heard like in pediatrics, we do, uh, for example, uh, 
uh, 15 is to 2 as well. I'll come to it. But in pediatrics, out of hospital, it is still going to be 30 is to 2. Yeah. So again, you check if patient is responsive or not responsive. You shout for help as well. You check for airway breathing as well. But in the pediatric one, before you do the 30 chest compression, what we do, we actually go for five rescue breaths. Mainly the collapse is usually you will see in pediatric cases in children, it's because of the failure of your respiratory system. Whereas in adults, it's cardiovascular system. So here, that's why you go for five rescue breath first, five rescue breath first, and then you're gonna go for 30 chest compression and two rescue breath, 30 chest compression, two rescue breath. So five rescue breath only once. So five rescue breath, then what you do, you go for 30 chest compression, two rescue breath, 30 chest compression, two rescue breath, 30 chest compression, two rescue breath. Five rescue breath are only, only in the beginning, that's it. Now, you also have to see if it is single rescuer or second rescuer. So if it is second, you have got two person, then you can make the call in the beginning as well. Otherwise, in children, what they say, you can make the call, if you are on your own, you can make the call when? After you have done one minute of CPR, after you have done one minute of a resuscitation, you can make the call. Obviously, if you have got the phone, you can put it on the speaker, you can call early as well. Otherwise, in children, even if you don't call, it's okay, but you should be going for CPR. One minute of CPR, then you may be going for a uh, uh, call, right? But 30 is to 2 if it is out of the hospital. But in the hospital, who is doing the chest compression? Who is managing? Doctors. So we know the things in pediatric cases. It's 15 is to 2, isn't it? So uh, what is going to happen here? Uh, call for help. In the hospital, it's double to double to. Outside, you call the uh, emergency. That is uh, triple nine. But in the hospital, if you're making a call, it's double to double to, right? Here, same protocol you'll follow. You go for five rescue breath. You go for a chest compression after that. But it is going to be 15 chest compression, two rescue breath. 15 chest compression, two rescue breath. 15 chest compression, two rescue breath. That is the main thing that you will be following for the pediatric DNS. So in the question, in the question, please check. Please check. Is it like they have given in the hospital? They have given out of the hospital. They will tell you it is going to be very clearly mentioned and please check the resuscitation council chart as well in the cubicle and please follow it accordingly. Right. And then you tell them to do it as well and they'll be able to do it and they'll make some mistakes. You will correct them. Now, if the child is five, six, seven years of age, you can go with one, one hand as well. The aim is the chest should go one third. Yeah, one third down. If it is an infant, you might be going with two fingers as well. Again, the aim is, the aim is the chest should go one third. That's the main thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that is the thing that you should know in the BLS. That's pediatric BLS and uh, the adult BLS. And don't forget this doctor's ABC for the adults. That's going to be making your life easy as well in the exam. All right. All right.